and welcome back to another one of my videos. This time we're going to do a short series on cranks, conrods, stroke and all its effects. Hope you enjoy it. managed to rustle up a small selection of cranks that we had knocking around. Uh, this is a 58mm uh, stroke mech and it's got 107mm rod. This one's another 58 black crank here but it's got 160mm rod on it. This one's a shiny new uh, SIP crank which is a 60mm stroke and a 116mm rod and then we've got here a 54mm stroke with a 116mm rod that's an AF race crank which is just GP Indian webs with a silver race bearing in there and their rod uh, I'll tell you a story about that one it's not too good Okay, this is uh, basically your standard GP crank. So we've got 107mm rod. So that's from centre to centre on the pin. So we've got the GP taper, which was uh, wisely improved by Mr Innocenti when uh, various tapers start shearing off once you get up to a certain brake horsepower with the weight of the flywheel because of the force on turning, acceleration and deacceleration, they were getting tapers snapping off. So they changed to this uh, bigger taper on the GP crank. So we've got the wider bearing here on this one, because this, oh, this is a second hand crank, so it's already got the uh, bearing race on it. This is a NU0205, which is wider compared with the LI one. So that's another difference you've got. Now, basically, on your crank, you've got your counterbalance weight, which is the mass on the opposite side of your rod. Because this is, your rod is, your, is part of your reciprocating mass, if you add the piston to it. So, if you want to work out your, your balance factor, you have to uh, do some calculations to work that out, which we'll probably do in another video later on but not right now, I'm just mentioning it. So uh, that's your basic setup. Okay, this is how the crank sits when the piston is at the top of the bore. And when it's, the piston is the bottom of the bore, it sits like this in the opposite. Now the difference, if your stroke's 58 mil, that is going to be 58 mil. It's from the very top of the stroke to the very bottom of the stroke, 58 millimetres, which will be double what it is from the centre of the pin to the centre of the crank. So if you want to measure what stroke your crank is, you determine from the centre of the crank to the centre of the pin, and then you double it, and that will give you your stroke. The uh, Woodruff key, it's a left-hand thread on the end of your crank as well, by the way. Woodruff key is simply to locate your timing ignition. Uh, once you've tightened the crank up, Woodruff key is almost obsolete because the pressure of the tape is what's holding it in position, not the keyway. The keyway is practically doing nothing. Right, one of the biggest problems for vibration is the reciprocating mass. The heavier your reciprocating mass, the more vibration you're going to get. So lighter piston and lighter conrod reduces vibration so a lighter rod is a must if you can keep the strength and weight down it's a it's a bonus on cranks so let's have a way of some rods so that one is there you go 54 grams, I need it bang in the center. That one's 54 grams, TV rod. This uh, mech rod here, which looks like it's built like a tank, I'm expecting to be extremely heavy. Right, 
So that one is 68 grams. So that's an extremely heavy rod. We go AF rod, 116 mil. 52 grams. Not bad at all. It's a little lighter. Right, now we've got the SIP rod, 116 mil. 46 grams. So that's a big improvement. You can literally feel the weight of it. It's so nice and the quality is so good. Uh, so that's going to reduce vibration, not only by it being a 116 mil rod, which therefore changes the acceleration and deacceleration at the big beginning and end of each stroke. So it's a softer uh, rotation. You've also got a lighter rod. So if you put that with a light piston as well, you're going to have a really smooth engine. Right, this is the uh, 54 mil stroke. So the, the pin in the web's much lower down on this. This one I got from AF Race Speed. Uh, as you can see, it's been TIG welded. It has been used on the track. Uh, this pin's got TIG welded because when it arrived from AF Race Speed, it was actually not even true. It had to be straightened out. So I had to re-straighten it and then TIG weld it because when I straightened it, it went so easy, it was ridiculous. So the pressure on this pin into these webs is absolutely pathetic. I mean, the material, it depends on the hardness of the material that you're pressing your pin into and the strength of it, how tight you can press the pin in. You really need really tight pressure, uh, pin pressure to stop the crank twisting. If you can't stop it twisting, most racers have always welded them up. So this is a welded up pin on this one. But some of the modern cranks that are now coming made by good manufacturers, for most engines, no welding required. The quality uh, of the webs is so good now, the material is so good, they can press to a really high pressure. Uh, I don't know what pressures they're using, Maybe Mr. Taylor will know, Taylor from Taylor Tuning. He builds cranks, some very good ones so I've heard. So um, if you're looking for really good cranks, Taylor Tuning is uh, probably one of the best guys to go to. But uh, off the shelf, I've been using these SIP cranks now, and uh, so far I've had absolutely no issues with them. Uh, raced with them on the track, and they're really, really good. No twisting so far. But then, I'm not pumping 50 brake. <laughs> Maybe 30. So, yeah, it's good. They're good cranks. Okay, thanks for watching my little episode, my intro on cranks. Uh, hope it wasn't too boring. Hope you'll come back for a bit more. And uh, other effects of rods. And we've got some programs and other stuff uh, in the pipeline for you to see and your entertainment. See you later.